Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about how to work less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy the work that you do and to enjoy your vacation time. Hi, I'm Sean, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation. There are two ways to pre-sell anything, selling and not selling anything at all. Most of us are nervous when we're called to sell something, but we have far less of a problem when we have to tell a story. For one, stories follow a pattern. They tend to start somewhere, they go through a pathway, and eventually they have an ending. Stories don't need you to practice and be precise because you're recounting something that's in your memory, something that happened in the past. And that is why a story can be a powerful way of pre-selling, especially if you want to get a message across, if you want to get features across, if you want to get points across. Let's take an example. Chris Voss is an ex-FBI negotiator and now the author of a book, really good book, called Never Split the Difference. Voss tells a story, and it goes like this. Voss starts the story about how he got introduced to Robert Herjavec. This is the same Robert Herjavec from Shark Tank. And Herjavec invited the author to lunch. And over lunch, Herjavec wonders if the Black Swan Group negotiation course can help his new sales team. Since the author has a negotiation training about to unfold in New York, he offered Herjavec a free ticket. However, Herjavec decides that he'd rather buy some tickets and send the team across. As the days pass, there's confusion and frustration building within the author's sales team. His people get on the phone and say, we are ready to sell out. And if Herjavec and his people don't buy now, there won't be any tickets, free or otherwise. The tickets to our events are very expensive, continues the author. And my team is mad at me for giving away anything for free. They don't care who it is, even if it is some famous guy from TV. Let's stop for now and look at the example. And you've already realized that there is a bit of a pre-sell there, because all of these features are stacking up one after the other. Let's look at them. Point one, there is a course and it's expensive. Point two, This is in New York. It's a New York edition, which means that it might be held a lot in New York or other big cities in the U.S. Point three, it's good for sales team and possibly if you're building a sales team. And point four, they're selling out. And from the way the story flows, they're selling out a lot of the time or all of the time, which is why they don't care who it is, even if it is some famous guy from TV. Notice, there was no overt sales pitch in that story, and yet it was a pre-sell. And it might not be a precise pre-sell for a course on the 5th of June, for example. It is still a pre-sell for something in the future. It still has those bullet points or features, and they're all rattling out one after the other in a story. All of it was engineered in that very story. And at Psychotactics, that's exactly what we do. And we do this a lot. If you've noticed or not, you will from now on. So you've read articles and you've listened to podcasts. And you know that we will run a story and it might be something like this. Maybe it'll be an article that I write which is about how to say no to clients. And the story will unfold like this. Back in 2006, we had a real problem on our hands. A client asked if he could bring his daughter along for the California workshop. She'll sit at the back of the room, he said. She's just a teenager and she's traveling with me. And as her father, I want her to be safe and within, you know, view, as it were. If it's not a problem, she'll just sit quietly at the back and do her own thing. Now, this sounded to both Renuka and me like a father's plea. It was very hard to turn down. But things soon went wrong. The girl didn't sit at the back of the room. She got involved in the group discussions. And 
at Psychotactics at our workshops, we have just 16 people at every workshop because we want everyone to go home with a predetermined result. It's not just information, it's a predetermined result. And this group of 16 is further broken up into groups of four. When another person suddenly enters our group, it becomes imbalanced. But her joining the group wasn't just imbalance, it was chaos. The story doesn't end there, but let's stop the story anyway and see what points you picked up. First, that we have workshops, and you most suddenly picked up on the fact that this one was in California. Two, that our workshops have small groups, no more than 16. Three, each of the groups is split up into smaller subsections of four each. And four, we don't just do information, but we give you a predetermined result which can be benchmarked. Now that was a very short story. It didn't even have an end, and yet there was a clear pre-sell for future workshops. If I wanted to signal seminars in Australia, I could give examples of something that we had in Australia. If, on the other hand, I wanted to suggest that we have workshops in Europe, I could have talked about the Brussels workshop or the Munich workshop. The story reads like one, it sounds like one, but it is precisely doling out three or four points that the listener or the reader is picking up. Now, it's not like your audience is just going to listen to something or read something and then decide, oh, I have to sign up right now. They will file the information away. And some of the clients will follow through. If, for instance, I were headed to New York and Chris Voss was having a workshop, then I would look it up, even though He's not given me any precise details in the story. There are no dates, there are no locations, there's no price, there's nothing. Yet, because I like his stuff, and because I might want to improve my negotiation skills, and because I'm headed to New York, I might look it up. Or I might decide to go anyway, just because I want to be part of that experience. Not selling anything, and just telling a story, doesn't mean that the audience doesn't pick up on the information. And yet your story has to have some kind of structure. It doesn't mean that you're just going to waddle through a storyline. It has to have a precise reason. The California Workshop article was about how to say no to clients, but embedded in that story were a set of points. And I need to know in advance what points I'm going to cover. And I need to be not greedy because... If I cover four to five points, if you cover four to five points, that's kind of okay. That's enough to get the reader or listener interested. It's not pushy, and this is the very thing, that pushiness, that salesy kind of attitude that causes most of us to struggle with sales. We don't want to hustle. We hate that icky feeling of pushing ourselves forward. But even the meekest of us can, at some of the time, tell a story. If you are clear what you're going to talk about, you'll find that every article, every podcast, every presentation, or just about anything that you say can be pre-sold and can be inserted in that story, and it becomes those bullet points, it becomes those features, and clients pick up on it. And by and large, if your story is precise, your audience will happily follow along. Even so, there is a situation where you're thinking, wait, all of these examples were about something vague, some bullet points, some features. What if I really had to launch something on a specific date? In such a situation, a story isn't going to be of as much use. A story is based on the past tense. If you have an event coming up in April, you have to treat it like you would in real life. What would you say to your friends if you were inviting them to dinner? You wouldn't fluff around and tell stories, would you? You'd say, I'm planning a dinner in mid-April and I'd like you to be there. And while it sounds relatively vague, you can pre-sell without a specific date. You can say, you're planning to have a tiger knitting course in mid-April or a storytelling course in May. You don't have to give or even have all the details. All you're doing is getting the audience prepared. However, at some point, you will need to give those details. You will need that sales page. All of the steps that the client needs to make the purchase will need to be in place. 
if pre-sale seems intimidating at first, avoid the specifics, go with the story, and here is a quick template. Step 1. Which story can you pull up from the past? Step 2. What is the service, product, or training that you want to sell? Step 3. What are those 4 or 5 points that you want to cover? Now that will get you started. And if you're not sure which story to tell, think of a person. The author thought of that person from Shark Tank, and I had to think of the guy with the teenage daughter. So think of a person, and that will bring up the story, and all you need to do is then put in the points that you want to cover. If you roll out one story, you will find that you can roll out two, and then 72. Every article doesn't need to have a pre-sale, but you might want to start with one in every four articles or every four podcasts or every four presentations, and then you get comfortable. And once you get comfortable, then you use it all the time. I do it all the time. And sometimes even, well, I do notice, but it's second nature for me. I don't feel stressed out when I'm bringing it up. I feel enthusiastic about the fact that I'm introducing a cartoon workshop or an article course or something, maybe cooking or photography or whatever I'm interested in. I don't feel stressed out. And I can tell the stories from the past, bring it to the future. And I think that it takes a little practice. When you start with the storytelling, and if you have a short story with a few points, you'll get more and more of this practice. And then you can get to the point where you really have to sell because pre-sale requires selling and it requires storytelling. Start with the storytelling and then go to the selling. And you'll find that it's not as hard as it seems. And that brings us to the end of this podcast. What did we cover in this? The first thing is that storytelling is crucial. And if you want to get to a story, find a person, something, some event that you had to deal with. Like for instance, I don't know, maybe I'm writing an article about how to get paid on time. And then I'll go back to the point when I used to work for this magazine and they didn't pay on time and then how, you get what I'm saying. Find that person because that kind of instigates the whole storytelling thing. Write your story, then see how you can insert the points that you wanted to cover. You're not trying to sell anything. You're just giving them features of things that you had at that workshop or that dog training or that pizza creation course that you had. And that's the way that you can introduce those bullet points, those features, and it becomes a pre-sale through a story. Try it and see how it works for you. And this takes us to the portion where we find out what's happening in Psychotactics land. At Psychotactics, we've got lots of products and training always happening. And I don't know, maybe we have over 20. For instance, in 2020 itself, we've had info products, article writing, uniqueness, and pre-sale. So uniqueness is coming up on the 18th of April to get to that page where you can get on the waiting list. You have to go to psychotactics.com slash you goodies that's you for uniqueness and you get goodies and you get on the list now this is a home study course but we only sell 25 copies and that's just how we operate our business we know it's digital but if you're interested you'll go to psychotactics.com slash you goodies and you'll get the goodies so you can evaluate how good or bad they are and they're good so go to you goodies and that's uniqueness again 18th of april on the 16th of May, we have pre-sell, and this is a coincidence, by the way. I didn't know that the pre-sell course was coming up. Again, this is a home study, and if you want more information on this, go to psychotactics.com slash pre-goodies. And if you type something wrong on our website, then you will find probably the second most interesting 404 page on the internet. Have you ever gone to the website and just typed in psychotactics.com slash XYZ ABC, something like that, something crazy. Go and try it today and see what shows up. Nothing nefarious. It's cute. Go there. 
that's pretty much it from me at Psychotactics Land. I'll say bye for now. Bye bye. And we'll see you in 5000 BC. Still listening? One of the presentations where I use this concept of pre-selling is in the pricing presentation. And I've done this presentation many places in Sweden, in Denver, lots of places. And in that presentation, we had the brain audit and we talked about how we priced the brain audit and how we increased the prices over the years. And then we went to 5000 BC and how we worked with that as the membership site. And then, of course, there was a third example. And this is very crucial to understand that you need to have other examples as well. Now, if you're going to just tell a story and it's a short story, that's cool. But if you're doing a presentation and it's 45 minutes long and you just talk about product one on your site and product two on your site and product three on your site, it's going to show up as a pitch. But if you mix it up a bit and you have a couple from another site or other products or other services or other training, and then you have your own, then what you're doing is you're creating enough of a balance. And that's what we did with this presentation. And that's how we sold a load of brain audit, a load of the pricing books and everything else, including 5000 BC. And if you recognize I'm telling you this story now and it's now become a sort of pre-sell, it's entered your brain. If you don't have the brain audit, well, what's the brain audit? What's 5000 BC? Maybe I should look, up, look that up. And so, as you can tell in a live demonstration here, I can tell you a story of something that happened in the past and immediately it starts to bring up points or things that you might want to look at. So use this concept of storytelling and you don't have to be a super pro at storytelling. A five-year-old comes back from school and says, you won't believe what happened in school today. Maybe not the exact words, but something to that effect. And then they tell a story. So look into your past, get the story, and then you will have a load of stories like we do. I'll say bye for now. I'll see you in 5000 BC. Bye-bye.